Hi there, it's Jeff here with a micro video. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about, well, first of all, the concept of a deadweight welfare loss, but then most importantly, the areas of the A-level or the IB syllabus where you can bring this key concept into play. And I've got four or five to, uh, to work through. So what do we mean by the term, first of all? Well, in economics, a welfare loss or a deadweight welfare loss is the loss of efficiency, the loss of social welfare, if you like, that occurs when the equilibrium outcome in a market or an industry is not socially optimal. So it's basically the trades that could have happened, the buying and selling that might have happened, but didn't happen due to distortions in the market. It could be an indirect tax, it could be a minimum price, it could be a subsidy. Also, it could be the consequences of market power, such as a monopoly, oligopoly, or things like uh, trade embargoes and trade protectionism. Now, in graphical terms, as we will see, the deadweight loss is the area of the triangle between the supply and demand curves, or the marginal benefit, marginal private, uh, marginal benefit, marginal cost curves, where trades no longer occur because the market is prevented in some shape or form from reaching an equilibrium. So some exam applications. This is the this is the really key bit, I think. First of all, a tax. When a government imposes an indirect tax on a good or service, a VAT or a specific duty, that increases the price for buyers, reduces the price perceived by sellers, and it leads to a fall in the quantity traded. Now, there could be good reasons for this, a taxation, for example, to address externalities. But even when we tax cigarettes or we tax vapes, for example, that cuts the number of packs sold, even though some consumers would have been willing to, to buy at the pre-tax prices. So there's a potential welfare welfare loss from an indirect tax. Likewise, when governments intervene in markets, minimum wages can cause surplus labour supply, some unemployment. A price ceiling, a rent control in the housing market, can lead to a shortage, excess demand and a welfare loss. So both floors and ceilings, uh, minimum and maximum prices, can distort the natural market equilibrium. And in theory, although they might be introduced for perfectly valid reasons, uh, reduce social welfare. Monopoly is going to be a key area where you can use this term. So all other things being equal, or Keter is Paribus, a monopolist reduces output and raises price to maximise profit compared to a competitive market. So we're going to get a lower output and a higher price than under perfect competition. A good example would be maybe the potential for a pharmaceutical company to price way above marginal cost, uh, limiting demand and supply and leaving some willing buyers unserved. And of course, with externalities, you probably use this concept in your market failure diagrams. Negative externalities from pollution, positive externalities from healthcare and education can cause a market on its own to either overproduce, oversupply, overconsume, or too little is supply compared to what we would perceive to be socially optimum. And that's that loss of welfare as a result of the divergence between private and social cost and benefit. And trade barriers. So don't don't be afraid to bring in this welfare concept when you get a question on trade protectionism in the form of import tariffs, quotas, any other restrictions on trade, which cut the volume of transactions between buyers and sellers across borders. A good example there would be an import quota, limiting supply, reducing choice, artificially driving up the price, leaving many mutually beneficial trades unfilled. So just a few examples of diagrams here. So externalities, this is a negative externality from production. The marginal social cost lies above the marginal private cost. The uh, private optimum is Q1. The social optimum is Q2. And the deadweight loss is a social welfare loss because the market output supplied is higher than the social optimum. Therefore, there's an overproduction, overproduction leading to market failure. Always best, of course, to label the deadweight loss of welfare. Positive externalities, marginal social benefit this time is greater than private benefit. And if the market ignores the externalities, they'll tend to be under consumption. We'd rather be at Q2 than Q1. So there's a market failure, a misallocation of resources. And this time the social welfare loss is this area, ABC again, shaded in green, because the market output Q1 is lower than the socially efficient level of production. Monopoly, standard, fairly standard monopoly diagram. Uh, profit maximising monopolist pricing at P1, output of Q1. The shaded area shows the monopoly or the supernormal profits. 
but there's some un, had the market priced at marginal cost, then we would have had a bigger output at a lower price. So the deadweight loss of welfare loss, deadweight loss of welfare, is the area A B C. And then with things like indirect taxes, I've just drawn two examples here: one with a fairly price elastic demand, one with a fairly price inelastic demand. And the, and the green and the orange areas show who pays the tax. But again, the the effect of a tax is to reduce quantity, increase price, and the welfare losses are equal to the areas A, B, C in both situations. And then an import tariff, tariff on a product, in this case a tariff on steel, which increases the price of steel for domestic consumers, leads to a fall in uh, consumer surplus, consumer welfare. The orange bit is the sort of tax revenue, uh, but the welfare losses are the areas A, B, C and D, E, F. In an exam, it's best to label areas rather than shade them. It's much easier for the examiners to clearly identify that you know what you're talking about. With shading, it gets a little bit messy. So do label your diagrams rather than shade. But a welfare loss from a tariff could be a nice, good analytical and evaluative point in a question on protectionism. So there we go. I hope you found this video useful. This was a, a revision video on the economics of deadweight welfare losses.